Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so a very good evening to you guys. In today's video, I'll be talking about DAPCO, that is a reagent, and Bailey's Hillman reaction, which is an important reaction that we need to study. Right now, uh, many of you suggested me that you know you are not able to follow me if I've already written down the reaction on the whiteboard. You prefer that you know I draw the reaction so that you can follow the mechanism and you can understand it in a better way. So I thought of doing this video on the whiteboard without writing the reactions. Right. Because what I thought was that earlier if I write down the reactions it will be easier for you because it will save you time but since like I got this, this kind of feedback that you want me to write on the whiteboard uh, when, when I go when I talk about the reaction if you find it better better so I thought of making this video in case you don't like that you can comment down below and you know maybe I'll change whatever way I'm teaching all right now coming on to this video in this video i'll be talking about the reagent that is dapco and how this dapco is utilized in the bailey selman reaction and why we can't use any other reagent apart from dapco like, right there are other alternatives as well but why dapco is the best alternative okay so first talking about dapco dapco has this kind of a structure right um so we have like a nitrogen over here okay so this is the structure of DAPCO and there are two carbons in between. So it's a fancy looking structure. This com this structure is called DAPCO. Uh, the I IUPAC name of this is 1,4 di as a bicyclo 2,2,2 octane. Okay. 1,4 di as a bicyclo 2,2,2 octane. That is the IUPAC name of DAPCO. So DAPCO, as you can see, there are two nitrogens and it is generally, it, it acts as a base. All right. Now, if I tell you, if I tell you to compare it with triethylamine, okay, let's draw triethylamine and, okay, and if the other way of drawing DAPCO is like this, so I can draw DAPCO like this as well. I can draw two nitrogens, right, and then like that. So I can draw the structure of DAPCO like this, this, this structure and this structure are equivalent only. Okay, and then there's one compound called cunolidine, okay, cunolidine, and the structure for cunolidine is like that okay and then we have so the only difference between the structure of cuno i am not i'm not very sure of the name it's cuno 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 nucleidine something like that right so this is cuno nucleidine and this over here is dapco and this is our triethylamine now if i tell you to compare the ba ba the basicity so the only difference between cuno nucleidine and dapco is that in dapco we have two nitrogens Right, and in, Q, in Q nucleidine we only have one nitrogen. That's the only difference between the two. So if I tell you to compare the basicity of these three bases, uh, which one is the most basic? All right. So this could be a question based on your acidity and basicity concept as well. So your Q nucleidine with a single nitrogen is the more most basic, followed by DAPCO and then your triethylamine. So your triethylamine is the least basic compound. Now, now the reason for that is quite simple. If you do the reactions of this particular three bases with methyl iodide right let's say you are doing alkylation and you're doing the reactions with methyl iodide then arcunonucleidine reacts the fastest followed by dapco and then triethylamine now the reason for that is now listen to me very carefully what, what is the reason for that the reason for that is that um see the lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen or in this nitrogen okay they are not shielded okay you have to remember that in a ring structure these alkyl groups these in the in the ring structure of cunonucleidine and dapco these alkyl groups are you know not interfering with the lone pair of electrons so this lone pair of electrons can easily approach this methyl group okay listen to me very carefully again these alkyl groups over here which are attached to the nitrogen in a ring structure in a ring in a cyclic structure or in a ring structure they are not interf interfering with the attack of the lone pair so the lone pair can easily attack this methyl group there's no kind of interference there's no kind of steric interference uh, of these alkyl groups in the ring structure okay because it's quite rigid right but if we compare uh, tri this uh, triethylamine the ethyl, ethyl groups in triethylamine they are actually providing some kind of hindrance 
for the lone pair on the nitrogen to attack this methyl group okay as compared to the ring, ring structure so the ring structure is sterically uh, not providing any kind of hindrance whereas this triethylamine the three ethyl groups are providing some hindrance to this lone pair to attack this methyl group because of which this becomes most basic uh, this becomes the least basic okay now if i compare these two the structures are quite similar so why is this more basic the reason for that is simple because of the in inductive effect of this nitrogen okay because this nitrogen will have some kind of inductive effect which are, because of which this lone pair of electrons will be less available for donation um, and that is why this over here is the most basic followed by dapco and then your triethyl amine right now uh, on the similar concept you can use uh, you can you can tell me which is more basic among these two okay one is pi pi piperazine okay this is piperazine a six membered um, saturated compound right this is your piperazine and uh, this is your morpholine six membered heterocyclic with nit with nitrogen and oxygen so this over here is your morpholine this compound is called morpholine and over here it's called piperazine okay this one over here is piperazine so you tell me which is more basic based on a simple logic if you use piperazines are more basic because over here we have oxygen the lone pair on the nitrogen is more basic because on piperazines right because uh, here we have oxygen and again because of the inductive effect of oxygen what is going to happen is this oxygen is going to pull the electrons because of which the lone pair on the nitrogen will be less available for donation so if you compare the basicity of these two components uh, your piperazine is most basic right so you understood about dapco and quinonucleidine but one important part about dapco is that generally all good nucleophiles are not very good leaving groups okay for example if i talk about oh minus now oh minus is a good nucleophile okay oh minus is a good nucleophile but it is not a good leaving group water is a good leaving group but oh minus is not a good leaving group all right like oh2 positive is a good leaving group oh2 positive positive that is oxonium ion is a good leaving group but oh minus is not a good leaving group so generally whatever components there whatever compounds which are good nucleophiles they are not very good leaving groups but that is not the case with dapco dapco is a very good nucleophile and on the other hand it's a very good leaving group as well that is why it's a very very important reagent and we'll talk about how it is used in your baileys hillman reaction okay so right so now in the baileys hillman reaction you again you have to remember the reactants okay so we have a aldehyde and we have any you know alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound or alpha beta unsaturated ester we can use anything like that basically we need an electron withdrawing group okay so what i mean by that is see let's say we have an aldehyde okay it's kind of very similar to aldol reaction okay we have a aldehyde and with the aldehyde we can use let's say uh, alpha beta unsaturated ester okay alpha beta unsaturated ester right so this is the alpha beta unsaturated ester here we could have any electron withdrawing group here we can have any electron withdrawing group in this case i am taking ester it could be a simple ketone also or it could be any other electron withdrawing group it could be a nitro compound as well right and what we are doing is we are adding dapco okay we are adding dapco and we have to predict what kind of product we will we will get so we will talk about the mechanism so we will draw the mechanism and see what kind of product do we get okay so first of all what happens the dapco i'll draw the structure the fancy structure of dapco so we have nitrogen nitrogen and then two carbons like this this is the structure for dapco so first of all what dapco does is the lone pair on the nitrogen it attacks this double bond over here right at the fourth position right if we compare this one two three fourth position so it attacks at the fourth position this double bond migrates like this okay and then this this double bond on oxygen it migrates like this right so this bond gets broken and we have a negative charge on the oxygen so right so what is generated is basically we have the r group okay then we have this this okay and then we have the double bond we have o minus and oet right so if you want you can label the carbons if you are having confusion you can label this as one this one as two three fourth right and to the fourth position we had the attack of the dapco so at the fourth position we can attach the dapco okay 
I'm just writing over here Dabco. Later we'll figure out what we have to do. I'm just writing over here Dabco to save some space. All right. So this to the fourth carbon we have Dabco attached. Now what happens? This O minus, this O minus it migrates back like that. And now what happens is this double bond it attacks this carbonyl carbon which is electrophilic in nature. All of you know this carbonyl carbon is electrophilic in nature. It has delta positive charge, right? So it's electrophilic. So this negative charge that will be generated will attack this carbonyl carbon on the aldehyde. And now what is going to be generated is basically we have our R group to which we have um, DAPCO attached and then we have our aldehyde, right? So a better in a more convenient way I'll draw it so that it is easier for you to understand. We have O minus, so this is our aldehyde, right? To this, this aldehyde is attached at the first, second, third position, right? So this aldehyde is atta attached at the third position. Then we have another carbon to which we have the DAPCO attached. So I'll write DAPCO, okay? And then we have our R group also, okay? And this is the third carbon, this is the third carbon. So we have a second carbon, then we have a ketone and then we have the ester right so if you are having some kind of confusion always label the carbons one two three four and then see where the attack is taking place where the dapco is attached so that things become easier for you to understand now what we do is we do something called as acid workup okay so we add some kind of a acid we do acid workup and this converts into your alcohol okay so we have oh oet right and then we can draw the same structures R and DAPCO okay now what happens is so now that we have got this particular product when, when we are adding an acid the acid is getting pro, this O minus is getting protonated but once the H plus is taken from the acid a conjugate base is generated so this conjugate base of the acid this conjugate base I will denote by CB minus is going to abstract the most acidic hydrogen and the most acidic hydrogen over here is this hydrogen over here right we have one hydrogen over here so this is a very acidic hydrogen now what the, it does is the cb minus attacks this particular hydrogen it attacks this particular hydrogen now there are two there are two places where this hydrogen when this carbon hydrogen bond gets broken there are two places where it can go either it can i'll show you with a different marker so that you have some easiness like it's easier for you to understand either the ch bond migrates like this and the oh group leaves okay or the ch bond migrates over here and dapco leaves now this is where i told you this is where earlier in the video i told you that dapco is a very good leaving group and this is where it comes into the picture because dapco is a very good leaving group as compared to oh so the ch bond will migrate over here right once once the ch once this car uh, conjugate base abstracts this hydrogen um, DAPCO will be removed as compared to OH because DAPCO is a good leaving group. So if I draw the structure over here, um, so we have OH, okay, and then we have this um, double bond O, OET, right, and to this we have the R group, and then we have DAPCO. Now I'll draw the structure for DAPCO. This is the structure for DAPCO right and we have a positive charge on the nitrogen because nitrogen has four bonds the dap group now this hydrogen will be abstracted by the conjugate base okay this hydrogen will be abstracted by the conjugate base and once this hydrogen is abstracted it abstracts this conjugate base this bond migrates like this and then your dap co leaves so what we finally what is generated is this is our final compound that i'm going to draw oet double bond R and plus DAPCO is regenerated so we can use DAPCO as a catalytic reagent so this is your Bailey's Hillman reaction this whole group it can be a, can be any electron withdrawing group okay so you don't have to it should not be ester it can be any electron withdrawing group it could be ketone it could be a nitro group it could be any electron withdrawing group that is present in the world right and you can get DAPCO back, back. So if DAPCO is acting as a catalyst. So this is your Bailey's Hillman reagent. Um, like I tried my level best to help you understand why DAPCO has been used. So there are two reasons. First of all, it's a good base. So it activates this particular reaction. And secondly, it's a good leaving group. So instead of this OH leaving, we have this DAPCO group leaving and DAPCO can act as a catalyst. So this was your Bailey's Hillman re reagent. And this was a little um, talk about your DAPCO and you know basicity of 
uh, amine bases, right? Basically, tertiary amine, tertiary amine bases. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you like this concept that I explain you each and every reagent and I draw it on the whiteboard. If you like this particular concept, please uh, you know just give me a feedback that yes you do like it. Just comment down below. Even if I don't reply, at least I'd read it. And um, or if you write if you like if you like me to write on the whiteboard then you can tell me that as well so whatever your feedback is please feel free to comment down in the comment section and thank you so much for watching this video giving so much time to to this particular video uh, that's about it thank you so much for watching